Hi everyone, welcome to this Make a Medic tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between nephritic syndrome and nephrotic syndrome. So to understand exactly how certain conditions will lead to either nephritic or nephrotic syndrome, it's important to first understand how the glomerulus is structured. So here we have a very simplified diagram in which we have the capillary in pink, we have the endothelial cells around the outside, and then we have the glomerular basement membrane, and then we have these cells called podocytes, which have these foot processes that extend onto the glomerular basement membrane. The podocytes are a very important part of this whole setup, because what they do is they prevent protein from entering the filtrate. And it's thought that this may be due to the fact that the foot processes compress the basement membrane and allow it to better carry out its function of preventing protein from entering the filtrate. So that's an important fact to keep in mind when we talk about nephrotic syndrome a bit later on. So nephritic syndrome, first and foremost, is associated with inflammation of the glomerulus and nephrons. And in conditions that cause nephritic syndrome, you tend to see a lot of blood and protein within the urine. And it occurs by a couple of different mechanisms, which I'll go on to mention uh, in a moment. Some of the other features of nephritic syndrome that help to build a picture is the fact that it tends to be associated by a reduction in the ability of the kidneys to filter the blood, and hence you get a rise in the serum creatinine. It may also be associated with some sort of trigger, such as an infection, and it can have an acute or subacute disease progression. So these are the key points to understand about nephritic syndrome. There tend to be quite a few changes that occur within the glomerulus in nephritic syndrome, because the capillary becomes quite leaky, the endothelial cells become damaged, and the basement membrane also starts to leak more protein and blood cells than it would otherwise. There's a number of causes of nephritic syndrome which are listed on screen, and it tends to be due to some sort of immune inflammatory process. So that may be due to the presence of some sort of antigen within the glomerular endothelium against which you generate antibodies, and once antibodies bind, to an antigen, it can trigger the activation of complement, which then results in all of these inflammatory changes. Similarly, there are certain conditions in which you develop immune complexes, such as SLE or IgA nephropathy. And the problem with immune complexes is that they're quite sticky, and hence they can end up becoming stuck within the fine capillary network of the glomerulus, and then it can activate complement and cause inflammation. Nephrotic syndrome, on the other hand, is defined quite specifically as a urinary protein loss of more than 3.5 grams per day. And more recently, 24-hour urine protein collections don't tend to be done quite as much, and measures such as a protein creatinine ratio or an albumin creatinine ratio may be used to define nephrotic syndrome. One key point to remember about nephrotic syndrome is that the underlying mechanism is due to podocyte injury. So remember what we said earlier about how podocytes are important in compressing that glomerular basement membrane and allowing it to create a barrier to the passage of proteins into the filtrate. So if the foot processes of the podocyte are damaged, it means that it's less able to prevent protein leakage. So nephrotic syndrome tends to be described as a triad of proteinuria, hyperalbuminemia and edema. And it can almost be thought of more as a sequence than a triad, because one leads to the other. There are a number of different causes of nephrotic syndrome, and it's important to remember that nephrotic and nephritic syndromes aren't necessarily two distinct clinical entities that can be somewhat of a spectrum in between. But all of these diseases listed on screen right now do work by causing some level of podocyte damage. There are many diseases that cause nephritic syndrome, and three of the main ones are listed on screen right now. So there are a few key features that help distinguish them from each other. So post-streptococcal glomerular nephritis is nephritic syndrome that occurs about four to six weeks after some sort of group A streptococcal infection. So that may be a pharyngitis, like strep throat, or it may be a skin infection. And it's thought to potentially occur due to some form of molecular mimicry in which the antibodies we generate mistake antigens within our glomerulus for something that it has previously encountered on the streptococcal bacteria. The management of it tends to revolve mainly around blood pressure control. 
Igenophropathy also causes nephrotic syndrome, but it also tends to be associated with more widespread features such as abdominal pain, a rash, and arthritis. And that's the most common cause of nephritic syndrome, and it tends to occur about five to seven days after respiratory or GI infection. So these two diseases are relatively often uh, mistaken for each other, but I think the main thing to remember is that the time scale differs. So with post-tropical glomerulonephritis, it tends to be four to six weeks after an infection, whereas the time scale for an IgA nephropathy is much shorter. And the reason it happens is thought to be because certain susceptible individuals produce an abnormal form of IgA. So if we have some sort of mucosal infection, like a respiratory or GI infection, IgA, being our primary mucosal antibody, will be produced in large numbers. So in susceptible individuals who produce a slightly abnormal form of IgA, their immune system will then recognize this abnormal form of IgA and produce IgG antibodies against it. And this results in the formation of an immune complex which can deposit in various tissues across the body, in particular the kidneys. The management again focuses on controlling blood pressure and steroids may also be used. Henoxron lipopurra is a condition that's primarily seen in children and is related to IgA nephropathy. So the pathology is very much the same, however, the deposition of these immune complexes tends to be more widespread in HSP. So there will be deposition of these immune complexes in the kidneys causing nephritic syndrome. However, it can also deposit within the skin or within joints or within various blood vessels in the abdomen, resulting in a papyric rash, arthritis and abdominal pain. It does tend to resolve spontaneously, but steroids may also be used. As for nephrotic syndrome, we mentioned that it's associated with a triad of features. It's also worth noting that patients with nephrotic syndrome are massively increased risk of thrombosis. This is thought to be because they lose a large amount of antithrombin-3 within their urine, which is part of the natural anticoagulant mechanism within our body. So again, there are three main diseases that fall under the category of nephrotic syndrome. Minimal change disease is primarily seen in children. Focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, or FSGS, is the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in adults, and it tends to be associated with other chronic diseases like obesity, diabetes, and HIV. And membranous glomerulonephritis is a largely idiopathic condition, and it's the second most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in adults. And all of these are thought to work by causing some sort of damage to those podocytes.